Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a, yeah, I think this is a home brew kind of a project. I think this is a one of the more professionally made units. I really don't know what this is so far. We just call it TAFC whatever that is. Hopefully I will find out sooner or later. I see some displays. Yeah, I can see that it reflects a little bit in there. So we got some seven segments in there, right? And uh, I am sure that it's one of those, the intelligent uh, counter LEDs that we are looking at, right? And uh, I think we also have something to do with a answer, lamp, start, delay, and then a base sign, whatever that is. Then we got a, another a pause and then a variable delay as it shows here in the schematic. So I think this is a the pulse schematic and you can dial it here and then you can multiply the time by 10. And luckily, there is this local or remote feature and a run and stop. So I think I should be able to get this up and running as a stand alone. There is a there is a few things I want to add about this unit. It is from a, a Danish um, university uh, where they work with sounds and acoustics and stuff like that. So I I think that this is not megahertz times. I think it's in milliseconds or something in that because then it makes sense sort of for acoustic or sounds or time delays in, in stuff like that, right? So the front here is written all in English, as you can see, right? Let me show you the back. And this is what I found a little bit weird. Because the the rear side, we got some really nice connectors. But here, text is all in Danish. Isn't that weird? So this has something to do with answer box and measurement connector. And this is a an answer lamp that you can turn on and off whatever that is. So there are probably some inputs and outputs. And look at the mains connector. So this is a, a very, very typical mains connector for uh, Northern Europe and for Denmark in the 60s. So, so that connector is definitely that old. And also these connectors, they were also very, very famous uh, back in the 60s and all the way up to the 70s. Super, super normal. Um, so, I of course got a mating connector, even the one with protective earth. So I can easily just power it up. But before I power this up, I need to open it and inspect the connections because I don't see any connectors here in the front. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense. I need to know where to connect my scope and to see what's going on. So yeah, let's look inside. The first word I said when I looked inside here, that was, wow. I mean, this is just beautiful. Aren't you a little bit impressed? There's a nice order of everything. This looks a lot like they plant every tiny little detail and then made all the nice drawings and designs and everything was well, well planned. Because otherwise you don't create a such a beautiful homebrew equipment. So yes, I am very sure about the seven segments. We got two and two of, uh, of those counter intelligent um, LED segments and uh, there are 
are most likely from Texas Instruments because they really were famous for those. And the transformer is located here in the middle. That is a little bit special, I think. And, <laughs> look at the wires and the way that it's soldered here. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what is this doing because all I've been able to figure out so far we got the two red wires coming out of the transformer I just follow those and they go to this board here and then we see four big diodes so that's probably rectifier regulator power supply and some ICs we got three ICs doing some funny stuff here and if we look here at the bottom down down here let's follow my finger all the way down to the bottom i don't know if you can see yes here you can see it in through that hole down there is a transistor and i believe there's actually another one so that is a, a good way to handle the the thermal uh, from the power supply right so yes definitely some power supply and some extra stuff circuit board is a double-sided home made uh, probably with uv light and all that development and such see we got tracks on the top side as well and the fun thing is back then it, it was of course a manual layout so you just have these tracks and then oh, i need some more wires so it's easier just to add those manually because rerouting here or redesigning stuff that is done manually on a piece of transparent <laughs> plastic and all that is just terrible and oh look at that we have a little switch down there see click de click i better put it back maybe i should try and open it a little bit more but everything looks quite nice so what I think I could do is just see the two black banana plugs their ground and uh, so I'll just measure with my scope what's going on here and then we got some signals here on the connector so I could also just measure what is going on here reference this to ground and then we'll see so that switches the start signal so we definitely got four something going in or out and those we also got four red things going on here so yeah i don't know i haven't yet figured out what is going on we see some maybe some uh, i don't know actually really what that is so while i am powering up my scope how about we just try and see what is going on here Whoa, that is some beautiful run. Stop. Okay. So something is definitely going on here. Oh, run. And then we... Oh, look at that. See, there's an LED. And then goes... Bleep, 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 bleep. And then they all turned off. Okay. It is all here in the middle. Let's, let's try and run again. Can we do that? No, we need to hit stop. And then there's another delay. Probably we select this. I don't know. I also hit release. Oi! What is that? So something here is going on with the LED, right? And then we do some blibbity blibbity. And then... <laughs> that was really cool with the numbers here well well I don't think that I understood anything so far <laughs> what the heck is going on so everything is times 10 and then run again is it probably going 
slower. Yes. Did you see the the blinks? And then it goes and then it stops. I guess. And we see here some one, two, three, four. That's probably the one, two, three, four connectors on the back. Oh, and it's using 21 watts at the moment. So I better try and uh, scope a little bit. So I've been playing around with this for a couple of hours. And I went through all the different pins of the connector. And I find a lot of really funny signals that's going on. See, um, every time I hit run, I get the this picture. But you see the two signals in the middle? Now they are to the right. And then I try again. And sometimes they're here. So this is completely random. And I think this is what this unit is doing. I think this is a random sign generator. And it is all about this one. So all these uh, pre things here, um, the delay here, the base sign, the pause, and all this stuff, that is those times we got here. So if you look at this, now I will start again just to show you. Now I turn a little bit on the first delay. See? Nothing happened, right? Then I take it. Give a little bit more on the base sign and then see now these two are longer then i put base time back again and then i take see oops too short here we go and then i take pause and move that a little bit up and i think that is the middle one yes exactly that was the middle one here that is now moved and then i got something that is called delay two Let's try and move that one. I don't see anything. Oh, yeah, we can enable. Oh, this is my fault. See, you need to enable this delay two, right? And then, no, no clue whatsoever. No, no. No fun with delay two. And then we have the last one, this random sign. See, if I change this, uh, the time of that a little bit up. See? Now, the random pulses, they are longer. More of that. And then let's try again. See? Even more. So that is the random pulse. And I can move it so short. So it is here, like that short. Or even shorter if I want to. And that's probably what you want. You want to have them either here or here. So I think that is what makes sense. And then you can poke around with the pulses until you do some fantastic thing. <laughs> I think, oh yeah, okay, today you could probably have done this with an Arduino and then five lines of codes, right? But, <laughs> and I still haven't figured out what are they doing uh, but that is, you see here, N11, N12, and then, I mean, that is probably a very, very, very high number. So that means I don't see anything yet. I have probably have to push this a million, million times before anything happens on the displays. Or it has something to do with the inputs uh, on the, I see some floating signals and... Uh, I haven't yet had any kind of luck with that. And I have a 384 kilohertz clock output as well, but it's not doing anything. <laughs> so, so that is really weird. And the fun thing is that if I turn this unit off and I turn it on again at random intervals, I can get all sorts of numbers here inside um, those counter LED displays, so they're not really doing anything to this uh, system, because if I just leave it like that and run my signal, I get exactly the same responses as before, so it's not really changing uh, any behaviors of uh, yeah, anything. So there isn't any, any setting in, out, or anything like that. So this is just a 
read out kind of thing that can, I don't know, count some stuff. And there's another little funny thing about this unit is it runs so, so hot. You can, you can really feel this entire side here is so burning, burning hot. And if I have my hand here, it is really easy to feel this and you can't even touch the rectifier diodes there. So all this stuff here is really, really using a lot of power. This whole area here is just burning, burning hot. So here's what I did. I took away the rear plate and then it was easy to pull out all the circuit boards so we can have a little inspection here. So this is the power supply and everything here runs really really warm including those capacitors. I don't understand exactly why that is the case. Well, that's probably just um, temperature from the diodes that's transported via all this soldering and stuff. And that is what makes everything really warm. And um, that will be the two other boards. If you um, look a little bit on the date codes, you will see it's 73 and 72 and something like that, right? So, uh, yeah, and 74. So I think this unit could be as old as 1974. What do you think about that? Got some... Uh, I mean, the, the layout here is just... <laughs> isn't it just fantastic? This is so much 1974, <laughs> if you look at the way that this is designed. Oops, let's try and... Look at the variable duty cycle percent. If you click something, anyway. Oh, yeah, so there's a trimmer down here, and then you can enable that. Well, well, a one of those mysterious. Home brewed, home designed boxes of fantastic things. If you happen to know anything about this unit or got some really cool guesses about what I can do of experiments, I mean, please tell me. <laughs> I would be happy to do some more funny experiments. And down here we can see those display. Um, yeah, counter displays and stuff. Alright, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.